everyone. Uh, this is Allie and Hannah from the Carl Bookshop back with another Bookshop Talk where we compete over what books are best. We talk about what books we're enjoying right now, or we answer common customer questions that we get at the Carl Museum Bookshop. Um, one of the most common questions we get from people is what books at any reading level do I get for a kid um, where reading isn't their favorite activity or they're very picky about what they read. So today, Hannah and I have each brought two of our favorite books that we recommend for more finicky readers um, and books that we um, keep you engaged and for those who have trouble sitting still, like me and Hannah. <laughs> so you can both relate all the yes. time. And we constantly say that if a kid isn't enjoying reading, it's most likely that they just haven't found the right genre or the right book for them. Exactly. So exactly. we're here with some little like, out of the box stuff to find that perfect fit book for your kid. Like and I'm excited to hear what you brought because you were saying that like you brought the best one. So I'm excited about I did. So I'm gonna at the risk of you know starting off high, I'm gonna start with the best one, which is this giant book you see called Inside the Villains. And why I think this is great for finicky readers is it plays off of common fairy tales that they're likely to know. You see the big bad wolf here and we see the giant and the witch. And that's really all, um, it's just three pages, but within those pages, there's all of these flaps that you can open that play to the, the witch's storylines. So over here we have their character card, which is kind of interesting. It feels kind of D&D-like where you're like, okay, if I was gonna play this character on a campaign, these are the things that I would have to be ascribing to and paying attention to. And so it's a lot of fun. It's really just those three pages and it doesn't have a whole plot that you need to get before you start reading it. It's really just the classics that your kid is going to be familiar with already. And then it's just all of these little things that you can open up and look at and close it up and do it later. And every time I've done it, I found something else where I'm like, oh, I didn't know this opened, which is always my favorite thing. It feels like finding a little present. So I love um, taking things out of the little pockets too. It's my favorite thing. I have always really enjoyed books like that. Remember the ology books like Dragon Age? Yes. I had all of those even before I could read them. I would just be opening the flaps and being like, okay, I'm going to translate everything into Elvish. And then when I started reading Lord of the Rings, I was like, oh, I, I know this. This is that. This is the same thing. In my childhood, yes. I was Egyptology. I think I read it until it fell apart. Um, so yeah, Inside the Villains is my first pick for finicky readers. That is a very strong start. I, <laughs> but I think I can, I kind of have something with the same vibe. Um, I have Rules of Summer by okay, Sean Tan. Yeah. Um, so you may know Sean Tan from The Arrival. It's a very thick wordless picture book about um, the Im immigration and it's all very mysterious and all of his books are very mysterious and strange and wonderful and you he never kind of fully explains what's going on in a lot of his stories and so you can fill in the blanks or you can just just sit there and wonder like oh, I really should go read that book again because I want to know more so rules of summer is kind of like inside the villains where it's very it has a very simple premise uh, it's about two brothers one older and one younger and the book starts off with just a blank page that says this is what I learned last summer and then every page is a full spread and then just one line of text um, so this one is my personal favorite. Oh gosh. Never leave a red sock on the clothesline. And it's just this, it's a giant rabbit like peeking over and you can see the two brothers like Howard and the older brother is keeping the little brother quiet. And that's it, that's what it says. And that's the rule. And so then we've moved on to the, like the next rule and the next one. Um, but they all have kind of little details that are really fun to read. So this is a good read by yourself and together. So you can read it to the, the finicky reader. Mm -hmm. And then 
and you can say, oh, what do you notice in this picture? Like what's going on? Like in this picture, this rule is never ruin a perfect plan. And it looks simple. Like it looks like they're getting away with stealing the strawberry, but when you look closely, they've stepped on the tail and you are like, oh no. And then you're wondering what's happening next, but then you're on to the next rule of summer. And Shantan was heavily uh, inspired by, I think, he talks about on his website that one of his favorite books when he was little was um, The Mysteries of Harris Burdick by Chris Van Allsburg, which is kind of the same idea where like there's one image of something just very curious happening and it doesn't give you all, it doesn't explain it why. Um, and it's like the, the Mysteries of Harris Burdick, this man who like collected these things. So I see a lot of that reflected in here that it's just a rule and then there's an image. So you can give this to a reader and they you can sit with this for hours wondering like, oh, like what did happen when you left the red sock on the clothesline? Did someone discover it? Does the rabbit eat red socks? Is because the rabbit's red and the sock is red that they're drawn to each other? And so it's something that you can like maybe bring into playing games you can play or writing a short story of your own. So it's a great book and above all it's a tale of two brothers because in the end they get separated and they have to come back together. So it's the two brothers learning the rules of summer and also learning that they love each other and yeah. So it does have kind of a plot in a story but the ones that the, I think the spreads that stick with me most are the strange ones that have no explanation. It's perfect I think going into the summer because I think everyone's a little bit like what are we gonna do this year? Yeah, you could give it to this child and, and they could give them prompts and say, okay, like, what are your roles for summer, mm. whether they be real or imaginary. So again, it's a book that's, it's less of a book and more of a guide or like suggestions of what you could do creatively. Yeah, I like these options that we have that are really aimed towards kids that are having trouble just sitting still and mm -hmm. listening, which is sometimes difficult especially when you really want to run around and you've just like been inside all winter which is where I'm at right now so inviting them to tell their own stories and have fun with it and create something else out of some beautiful illustrations um, yeah. is definitely the direction that we're going in. That's a great point too because I, I think another obstacle for kids that reading isn't their favorite thing they're already in front of zoom all year and they really don't want to be it's another thing where you're asking them to sit still even if it's a fun activity like reading can be really hard yeah. like inside the villains is an activity rules of summer is like a prompt it sparks activity which yes. there are a lot of picture books that do that and we could go on for hours just about books and in the reading library we do have a couple that we just pull out every day and we just leave out so if kids do want to imitate a animal or a train or do their own activity prompts we do have a lot of that in the reading library so check it out next time you come to the reading library so shall we move on to our slightly older reader crowd please okay so again going with the theme of scary bunnies okay um, my choice for finicky middle grade readers is Bunicula, a rabbit tale of mystery by Deborah and James Howe. So, so good. This is Nosferatu for 21st century kids. It is not too long, not too dense. So it's really something that you can just read for yourself at the end of the night or when you're sitting over a bowl of cereal. And it is a story told from the perspective of the dog Harold and Chester the cat and there's this new pet in the house and this pet is a little bit weird and they're not quite sure if it needs to be trusted and then at the same time all of the vegetables are mysteriously I'm gonna say dying because I don't want to give it away and so Chester and Harold have to go and figure it out and Harold's just very grouchy and doesn't want to get up from the couch. So the entire time he's like, uh, do I really have to? <laughs> Which feels very fitting for someone who maybe doesn't want to sit down <laughs> and read where it's like, do I really have to read this? 
Yes, you do. It is very funny. Share it with your grownups. It's, I promise you will not regret the few minutes that it takes for you to read it. It's great. It's ridiculous. And there are other ones that you can read. There's a whole bunch now, but you don't have to. It's very, it works very well as a standalone story and it's very, very funny. So, I think the Howl a Day In was my favorite of the series as a kid and still now because I reread them all the time. What would you say to um, someone who came in and said, oh, maybe I'll read it, but it looks a little scary? It, that's kind of the point. It's, it looks really scary where you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to be, <gasps> it's going to be a monster. And then it's, it's a bunny. <laughs> oh, so it's really, it looks so scary, but it's not. It's highly comedic and yes. no gore or blood, as you may not expect. A vampire <laughs> book without expected. blood? Yeah. So, yes, not scary. Very funny and mysterious. I also chose a funny one. I feel like our our vibes are very similar when we go for books for finicky readers because um, it's something strange and mysterious and then something really funny um, as a way to get people more into reading. So I also have middle grade. I have a middle grade graphic novel. I have Dungeon Critters by Natalie Reese and Sarah Getter, who are actually partners in real life and they draw together a lot. It is not just the funniest graphic novel, but one of the funniest books I have, I have read in the last few years. Um, it came out in 2020, and I was genuinely laughing out loud reading this. It's amazing. They describe it as a, um, a Dungeons and Dragons style dungeon crawl of the story and against a sinister botanical conspiracy. And I mean, that's all you really need to know, isn't it? <laughs> I'm already hooked. It's amazing. Um, friends who are, um, if you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons, you're in a party and all the characters are very different and you're going on an adventure. So it's this party and they have uncovered a conspiracy and I'm not gonna say anything about it because there are so many twists and turns and there's so many characters and they're all wonderful. And I just, I think there's a, a second one out already and I'm hoping they just keep this going. It's hilarious. The characters are all very different. My favorite characters are definitely Goro this big, friendly, lovable. He's the muscle, but he's also just the sweetest one in the group. And then Prince Chirp up here. Oh, a little frog with the most charisma. They have the highest charisma, I think, of the whole group. Um, but all the characters are wonderful. And what's something great is they all have different varying gender identities and different pronouns. And often uh, the writing kind of um, leads you to guess someone's gender. And then it's revealed later or not revealed later that you're wrong. So it's every fluid without it being important. It's mm -hmm. not really of the plot that these characters move different ways or I have different gender markers than you might expect. Um, it's just part of the story, which as it is in real life as well. I was um, literally just thinking like that. Yeah, and even when they tell you their gender identity, it may be different from what you expected because of how they present. And there's so much great gender expression in this. Great moment when they all get a costume change and they have that bam moment when they're all showing off their new looks. And I just, I'm a huge fan of that. I feel like comic book characters don't get to change their clothes enough. And again, just one of the funniest things I've ever read. They all really care about each other. They're all looking out for each other. Um, even when they're mad at each other, they're there to defend each other. Yeah, and it's just one of the funniest books I've ever read. It's great for kids who like tabletop gaming. It's great for kids who want to get into it. It's great for kids who like a good adventure. Um, it's really gender neutral. There's a lot of pink on the cover, but it's for anybody. Yes, we all so know good. color doesn't define anything these days. It does not. And, and it's love it. <laughs> I like that we both chose books that are very D and D ish. Yeah, <laughs> tells you where our heads are at right now. We're both very excited to get out there and start creating new stories and interactions with people. And those are all of our suggestions for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you need more suggestions or you have any questions, you can DM us or leave us a comment or check out our staff gift guide, which is on our website. All of these books are also available 
Thanks for joining us again for another bookshop talk and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. If you have any more questions we should answer in the future with book recommendations, please leave them in the comments. Thank you. Have a great day, y'all. Bye.